two things to discuss before we get started tonight. Um, first off, just a note. Since it is almost Black Friday, um, and obviously you or people in your family are going to go out and buy electronics, uh, this Saturday we are going to be having a um, edition of uh, RDA Tech Q&A for you Black Friday shoppers. Although, why would you do this? I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm going to be hanging out with cats on Black Friday. Saturday at 9 p.m., uh, Mike and I will be taking your questions regarding your technical stuff. Any questions you have, a look at some news stories and whatnot. If you have questions for us that we might be able to help you with, send those to requests at radiodeadair.com. That's requests at radiodeadair.com. I might even put a little graphic on the screen to remind you. So you can join us for that. It'll be this Saturday at 9 p.m. And also, before we get started with the story. That's also where your musical requests should go and not in the chat. Not in the chat, yeah. Also, uh, this week is, of course, Black Friday. And it's time. We Next week, we are going to have all the horror stories because you're not going to listen to what I say right now. All the riots at Target. Yeah. The um, stampedes at the Walmart. But uh, we, we're going to. The beatings at Best Buy. We are going to um, talk about some stuff that you're not going to listen to us, but we're going to talk about it anyway. Look, Black Friday is hell for retail employees, okay? Mm -hmm. Um it's it's not a game, it's not a running of the bulls. It's it's keep your shit calm yeah. is is what it's coming down to here. Do, don't take out any of your frustrations if you can't get a thing, if they are sold out of a thing, chances are that the store only had 10 of the thing to right. begin with. Or they opened at midnight and that thing was gone by 2 a.m. Yeah. So the people who work there have no responsibility for any of this. No they, control. They don't make the decisions. They don't make the sales. They don't make the flyers. They don't bring in. They don't nope. order the stuff. Nope. All, all they are there to do is make sure you don't burn the place down and take your money. That's about it. Yeah. And try to retain some semblance of order. Which will fail, but you know. Yeah. So my my general rule that I like to tell people when shopping during the holiday season is to remember you can leave anytime you want. If the mall or shopping center you're at gets too annoying, too crowded, too hot, too covered in strangers' kids poop. That is the thing that can, happens. Yeah. You can leave. <laughs> you can go home anytime you want. The people that work there. They can't. They don't have that option. They have to stay until their shift is done, no matter how fucking horrible it is. So keep that in mind. You can leave anytime you want. You and if it gets too bad, you can just go home and shop online. And also the people who that's work. How I do Black, that's how I do Black Friday. I do Black Friday fucking online. It's genius. Yeah. I don't I, know why you would enter a shopping place on Black Friday. Yeah. It, it, it'd be, it'd be, I, I know it hurts the retail stores, but come on, this whole Black Friday thing is is horrible for everyone. I've, I've been getting Black Friday emails since last Friday. Just like Black Friday is now a whole week. Be kind to the people who work there. If you're not, they have every they have every reason not to be kind to you. Because who the fuck? You're never shopping in that store again. You're just there to buy the one thing and then fucking leave. You're an asshole. We know assholes. If you're going to be an asshole to a retail worker, you're an asshole. What is that that old saying about when you go out on a date with, with someone? Watch how they treat the, the service people. Yep. Watch how they treat service people and pets. That's your first inclination about whether they're worth dating. If, if they're if they're dicks to pets and service people, get away. If your date is an asshole to the waiter, your date is an asshole. Yeah. That's why jobs do lunch interviews. Because you're going to be nice to the person interviewing you. But you have to depend on see how you behave to the waiter staff. All right. Yep. Now. Make us proud out there. Just now. don't go out. I mean, honestly, I recommend you just not do Black Friday. Because it's bullshit. Just skip it. But if you must. But of course, we are going to have stories next week. Because we yeah. always have fucking stories. Because we have a whole day dedicated to make, giving thanks for what we have. Immediately followed by a day where we beat the shit out of each other to get more stuff. Because America. America. All right. Let's start this thing. Each week, Catherine, 
Radio Dead Air audience go out worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong With You? And you know what? It's very rare we get to kick one of these off with, with a feel-good story. Ooh. But we got a feel-good story. to be thankful for. You know what? I sure am, because there's much horrible, weird stuff that happens. Sometimes there's just weird stuff that happens that make you thankful you were there. So let, let, let's give thanks for some of the weird stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, going up to the penis in the sky. Yeah. It's where I want to go, where I die. <laughs> when I die, <laughs> lay me to rest. Going to go to the place that's the best. Do you really want to go to the penis in the sky? You know what? If if that's the option, sure. If 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 <laughs> if I find out when I die that that's an option, how could I? I just come on. It's like when you're you go to like an ice cream store and they have like Rocky Road bubble gum, and you can sit there, man, like I gotta try this weird ass thing. Just what when, when you die, they they give you if they give you the penis option, you gotta be like, oh, I gotta see what this shit's all about. Yeah, but I mean that's that's like a permanent choice though, so I don't know. You're the person who 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 presented us with puppetry of the penis, Tara. So, which is a genius masterpiece of theater. I will have you know. U.S. Navy, and here's the picture for everybody so you can get a good big look at the sky dick. Sky dicking. I thought snow dicking was the end of it, but here's sky dicking. <laughs> U.S. Navy officials have issued a statement acknowledging one of its aircraft was used in the drawing of a male genitalia in the sky over a county in Washington state. Officials at the Navy, Naval Air Station Whidbey Island in northwest Washington told KREM2 that one of their aircraft was used in the sky riding. Navy holds its air crew to the highest standards. We find this absolutely unacceptable of zero trading value, and we are holding the crew accountable. I like how they had to point <laughs> out that it was of zero training value. The fuck you say? Really? That is that's a... not that's not gonna that's not gonna help us with North Korea. That kind of flying, my friend, that is some pinpoint accuracy. <laughs> And I asked Dan when I saw this story, like he wasn't in the Navy, he was in the army, but I'm like, what kind of, what kind of punishment do you get for a thing like this? That, that, that's a lot. I was like, I, highly, that su like I highly suspect there was a scene from Top Gun. Really yeah. He just sent me that this. clip from Top Gun after the flyby. He's like, it's something like this. And yeah. I'm like, is that where like in the movies you're scrubbing the latrine with your toothbrush? He's like, no, that's like, you're losing rank. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I beg to differ. Okay. This took skill. <laughs> this yes. this took a demonstrable skill in aer aeronautics. This took someone who was able to fly with this level. This is who I want defending my nation, ladies and gentlemen. Right now, like, our country is being run by, like, a sentient scrotum. Yes. Kind of the military is the only installation we have left to really respect. So, like, all the military brass has got to be just like, dude, come on. Come on. Like, we don't need this. Kind of the only story that I have from the military that's even holds a candle to this was a guy who took an armored personnel carrier through a Burger King <laughs> with the drive through, <laughs> obliterated their asphalt. But yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> Will in the channel says, look, I up in the sky. with an also deal. Will in the channel says, look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. That's a penis. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm going to say, there's a genius piece on Duffel Blog, which is kind of like the military's version of The Onion, about the chick, about a chick that drew vaginas in the sky. Oh, that wasn't real? I was hoping that was No, real. that wasn't real. I only but saw the headline. absolutely genius. Spoiler yeah. alert, this is actually how Superman comes back in Justice League. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually not the Navy. Superman flies around in a giant dick. <laughs> and then flies down and punches Batman in the dick. I, I, I love this, though. I love Oh. This would be you, and this is why your military <laughs> career would be very short. It would. Because the second they gave you a plane, this is what you would do. Force but draw dicks, the military. Uh. <laughs> that, that was also probably spawned by, like, 
three guys on the ground and one of them saying, you won't do it. No, <laughs> no, I will <laughs> You no. hold my fucking beer. <laughs> Oh, we oh this okay. Now we move on to oh for fuck's sake. Let's have some police shenanigans, shall we? I say shenanigans in the loosest of terms. What the fuck happened here? Detroit police officers brawl after undercover drug raid goes wrong. <gasps> police in Detroit are investigating a fight that started when officers raided a suspected drug den, only to discover the dealers were undercover police from another precinct. Two officers sustained minor injuries, including a black eye. Um, during the botched operation, 12 precinct officers who were posing as drug dealers were held at gunpoint by police from the 11th precinct. Video from the incident took place on November 9th. It's been released part of the investigation. The body cam footage shows one officer shouting, don't put your hand on your gun, while another says his team has a search warrant. As the brawl develops, the body can is knocked off the uh, officer filming. Believed a lack of communication over the existence of the war it led to the problem. I think a lack of communication in general. It, Do they not have like a code word or something? It says a lot about, you know, the cops that when they get in this situation, instead of going, whoa, man, I'm sorry, this fucked it. They get into a fight. They start beating each other up. <laughs> You motherfucker, you blowing our thing. No, you shouldn't have been here. You should have told somebody. You should you mother. That's, that's. Like, don't they have, like, if the dealer you're about to rest yells, like, rutabaga. Oh. Oh, you're one of us. My bad. <laughs> Stop S&M, Tara. Maybe it's... they should take some cues. <laughs> Maybe there should be a police safe word. Oh, because, you know, they were actual drug dealers nearby, like, <laughs> you know, right? They were pulling out their iPhones. They were filming this shit. Yeah, they had they beers. Like, the best day ever. They, had be they got lawn chairs out. They're just sitting back. Ugh. I mean, but I love they got into a fight with each other. And they got into a fight after they knew who they each other was. It's like, it's like if Zack Snyder did Hot Fuzz. <laughs> <laughs> I just, but these, oh, it, it, it sells me with a lot of confidence in law enforcement to know that when they are placed in a difficult situation and a mistake has been made, their first response is to beat the shit out of other law enforcement officers. Yeah. Because that's helpful. I just there's mother there's fucking dealers on the street who are taking bets on your ass. Who's gonna <laughs> kick who's You are you are bad at your job. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, technically the undercovers are great at their job. <laughs> Cause fuck the police. <laughs> oh, well, it is, it apparently, moving along, apparently it is Christmas already. At least yeah. according to- We have neighbors that have Christmas lights up already. And I'm like, guys, guys, it's not even Thanksgiving yet. What the fuck are you doing? Apparently it's, this is something I don't, I it was never much a part of my Christmas growing up. I don't know how much this, this is an American thing or just, it wasn't with us. Is the advent calendar like not a big American thing? I don't know. We always had one, but we were like super duper Catholic. Okay. Because I, I know England is way bigger. I've been to the UK. UK, the advent calendar is more of a thing over here, over there. It's a really Catholic thing. Mm -hmm. So okay. I don't know. I mean, in the South, you have a lot more like evangelicals than you do Catholic. So. Well, that kind of makes this, this next story a little bit worse. I think this is from Australia. Oh boy. Um, Greg's apologizes for replacing the baby Jesus with a sausage roll. <laughs> <laughs> the UK's leading bakery food on the go retailer, Greg's, has apologized for replacing baby Jesus with a sausage roll in a festive advert. In an attempt to promote its new advent calendar, the bakery chain released imagery of the three wise men 
crowded around the meat feast, laying in a manger instead of the Son of God. Jesus Christ, somebody took a bite out of Jesus. <laughs> you know what? We take a bite out of Jesus every <laughs> Sunday. We take a bite out of Jesus and we take a sip of Jesus. Yeah, but wasn't Jesus Jewish? I'm pretty sure he's I mean, not, not cool with being please. a sausage roll. <laughs> well, if it's beef sausage. Yeah, I'm betting it's not. I, I mean, oh, now we're being honest, most newborns <laughs> look like a sausage roll. True. Really. Somewhere between a sausage roll and Winston Churchill. So that's <laughs> probably what he looked like when he was born, because newborns are ugly little creatures. I, I love I love how we're arguing about if the, if Jesus is kosher or not. <laughs> I don't think you got the option to not be kosher back then. <laughs> I I just it, I, what did what, who thought? Okay, since apparently the advent calendar is for Catholics who are <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, I don't, I don't know if other Christian denominations really do the whole Advent thing. You're Lutheran. Did you do Advent? Uh, yes. OK. Yeah. Because we had the whole wreath, too. You have the wreath with three purple candles and one pink and <laughs> it's a whole thing. I mean, it's John, John the Wizard in the channel says my savior has a first name. It's O-S-C-A-R. That's <laughs> <laughs> the second name. It's M-E-Y-E-R. J-E-S-U-S. <laughs> Jay, hey, Wa Jay Walker in the channel says the wise men brought gold, frankincense, and mustard. So, <laughs> I it's I'm I'm just wouldn't this is another one of those get a thirteen year old into yeah. your pitch meeting <laughs> because if the thirteen year old thinks the shit is way too funny, it's not a good idea. Well, I'm like it like. Well, I mean, I was raised by Irish Catholics who definitely have a sense of humor about being Catholic. Right. But not a lot of religious people have a huge sense of humor about their religion. No. Especially, like, Christians are not super... No. Like, don't have a great sense of humor about Christianity. So... And the bite, I think the bite taken out is, I mean, uh, you, you don't, otherwise it just looks like, like a jelly stick or something. So I get why they display it that way, but like, it does, it looks like one of the wise men got a little peckish. <laughs> we've replaced the savior of mankind with a Look, sausage roll. Let's see if anyone notices. We've been walking around the desert for 12 days, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and of course, it's it's back to old familiar territory. Why did it... there's no room at the end? But if you go to the Seven <laughs> Eleven, next story is back to some old. Familiar... Say Seuss, they'd be a burrito. <laughs> <laughs> the Mexican chain has a burrito. Yeah. This is this next one is some old familiar territory for us. Sadly, I, I... why why does this why. Fight erupts at Indianapolis drive through over chicken nuggets. Indianapolis. An argument over chicken nuggets got out of hand when police said two women attacked the manager of a 24-hour McDonald's through the drive through Let me let me scroll down to what, what the problem was here. Um said the women pulled up the second window, said they hadn't been given all the nuggets they ordered. The manager said they place an order for four nuggets, not ten. He even showed them the receipt. Said the woman asked if they could place an order for them at that time. The manager told them they would have to drive around and order at the sideboard. According to the police report, the manager told them, have a nice day. That's when the situation escalated to this. All I knew was I had to keep rolling and shooting that video because it was going to help the individual decide. Um, I, so, all right. You were told, here's how the drive through works. And if you've ever worked at a drive-thru, you kind of understand this. you got to keep moving. You've yeah. got to keep moving. And if someone places an order at the drive-thru, it goes to the order person, and then it goes to the kitchen, and then it goes up to you. And you're the person who hands them the food. And all those people have little timers. And if you are, have not, like, exited the property in 90 seconds, they fucking hear about it. Right. It's a thing. So you can't just place a new order at the window. Because no, that's that not the person. Everything. They're not even equipped to take your order at the window. No. They're just there to hand you the shit and take your money. Sometimes not even take your money. Sometimes they have a 
A second right, person. They have a second, a whole separate window for that. Like there's literally a window where all they are equipped to do is hand you food. That's it. So when they say you've got to go around again, you're not getting dissed. All right, right. They're not being dicks to you. There's a process. Like I like McDonald's McNuggets. I do. The little honey mustard sauce. I like them. I understand that they're made out of, you know, bones that have been put through a fucking pulverizer and then reconstituted into shapes. I get that, but they're tasty. <laughs> Maybe those bones have calcium. I don't know. But I, I don't like them enough to beat people physically over no! them. Oh, and they... I'm really fucking unpleasant when I'm hungry. You can ask my very patient saint of a husband. I'm really goddamn unpleasant when I'm hungry. She's kind of a Snickers commercial. I am. When I was in Chicago for Anime Midwest, we all went to uh, a steak steakhouse. And I had the best steak. It was a $75 steak, the best steak I've ever had in my life. I could, in theory, be inclined to punch somebody to have that steak again. It was that good of a steak. Not for Chicken McNuggets. No. Okay. There's, I have a threshold, right? I have a threshold, but it's up here at $75 steak. It's, it's not going to be worth the felony charge. No, no. Like that food has got to be worth the felony charge. That, yeah. That, it, if, it, if it's worth me going to jail. Okay. I, I would go. I would, I would I mean, be. I, like I had my, one of my former managers at my most recent retail job was kind of afraid of me because I was hangry, and he tried to make a joke, and I bit his fucking face off on the sales floor. And ever since then, after that day, if I was like, wow, I'm kind of hungry, he'd be like, have you taken your break? Go take your break. Like, go, 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 go get some Starbucks, whatever. Because he was like, I don't, I don't want to be around you when you're hungry. And still, <laughs> I didn't punch anybody. I wouldn't have did for chicken nuggets. No. They're not that good. They're really, they're okay. They're, okay. they're not, you know. You, they're pulverized chicken bones. They're not one of. Reconstituted and deep fried. They're not one of those experiences you have to have before you die. No. If you go that. from cradle to grave and never put a chicken nugget in your mouth, you ain't missed a damn thing. I promise. No. You'll be okay. <clears throat> and now you're going to jail. Congratulations. You're going to jail. Where there are no chicken McNuggets. And this, this is yet another, I, I. I, I, this is yet another one of those crimes where someone has to go to jail. Like, what are you in for? I punched someone for chicken nuggets. Right. You're not going to do well in jail. They, yeah, good luck with that in the food line at the prison. Yeah. Huh? <sighs> okay, this story. I was, they have the absolute best mugshot for what this guy did it's <laughs> this one is a good mugshot uh police man nearly steals two trains from phoenix rail yard <laughs> and here's that mugshot that's that's yeah <laughs> <laughs> that that definitely looks like somebody who would just tr try to steal two trains. <laughs> Fix. Yes. Fantastically groomed eyebrows, though. He does. <laughs> he does. Look at his eyebrows. They're fantastic. I would kill for those eyebrows. Phoenix, Arizona. A man caught in the engineer seat of a locomotive, a locomotive nearly pushed enough buttons and pulled enough levers to steal the train. Union Pacific Railroad Police reports that on November 8th, employees heard a train horn blowing excessively and went to investigate. There they found 20-year-old Julio Rodriguez in the engineer's seat. Rodriguez, who was released from jail that morning. Dude. <coughs> Dude. Allegedly admitted he entered the rail yard with the intention of stealing a locomotive. Dude. Come on. He reportedly told police he climbed in and began moving levers and pushing buttons while reading the operation instructions found inside. 
Wow. You just got out that day. Maybe the McNuggets are really good in prison. <laughs> and, there, and the reason people are asking, what, two trains? The first train was connected to another engine. Yeah. So he was trying to... So to what were you going to do with the train? Seriously, what, what was the plan here? You can't even drive it home. No. It go one way. It goes one way. It does not go right or left. It goes that way. That's, that's the only way the train goes. What was the plan? <laughs> what are you going to do? What the fuck? Well, you could try and take it to a chop shop again. It only goes one way. They're going to find it because there's only certain places it can go. It's not like you could disappear. Right. It's it's not going to be a tough search. Okay. I'm sure the channel says he read the manual. That's better than 90% of the users when I worked in tech. True. And yeah. it's better than <clears throat> half the people we get who steal large automobiles. I just... I'm... What were you going to do with the train? And the day you got out of jail. The same fucking day. You'd be like, I paid my debt to society. Now I'm going to steal a train. That's, That's not what they mean by riding the rails. I, like, <laughs> why? There's no, there's no fucking motive. There isn't. Nope. Nope. I, I don't understand. Was this a bucket list thing or something? I, it... I don't understand how his brows look that good when he just <laughs> got out of jail. <laughs> this is what watching TV with Tara is like. <laughs> In and I'm like, mm, that lipstick, not so good today. We'll be watching a horror movie. God, she does a really good smoky eye. Like, yeah. Really? Yeah. People this are like, dead. She got a knife in the chest. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Yeah. All right. And finally, this week, you know, I was just saying to myself the other day, we haven't had a naked rampage in a while. Oh. Maybe, maybe that's, maybe things are okay. Maybe that's, maybe no, that, that's, that's going. Nothing's go okay. Maybe nothing's that's, okay. maybe that's not going to be a thing anymore. That'll always be a thing. When that stops being a thing, like, we retire. And I love the stock photo on this. Wow. <gasps> oh, yeah. You told me about this. I did. <laughs> This isn't an old-fashioned naked rampage. This is this is like the naked rampage Olympics. Yeah. yeah, this is like the team division. And yeah, I don't understand what's going. First, before we get into the story, I don't understand who chose this stock photo. No, because I don't think there's anything about scuba diving involved or no, snorkeling. No, there is more. I want to know what the Google search was that turned up that stock photo. Yeah. <laughs> Furthermore, I want to know who waxes his chest. <laughs> that shit is baby smooth. And you can tell by his face that he's a hairy man, so... Sullivan, Missouri, population 7,126, allegedly witnesses some bizarre activity over the weekend with people running through the streets, barking like dogs, racing into homes thinking they were being chased, breaking into a nightclub and stripping naked in order to shower in soda and fountain water, according to a brief in the Sullivan Independent News. Police believe the strange behavior due to <gasps> methamphetamine laced with a synthetic drug called Flocka. Flocka! Yep. How long has it been since we've seen good old Flocka? <laughs> it's been like a year. I thought that drug went out of style. According to KSDK, police say that they know of at least four people who overdosed on the drug this weekend. While police are unable to test the substance, the user's behavior points to the telltale signs of a meth flocka combination. In addition to raising body temperatures dangerously high, flocka has a tendency to throw users into fits. Some Sullivan businesses saw the effects of the drug this weekend. Sullivan Bowl man general manager 
Uh, Alex Okrasa told KSDK uh, that suspect stole more than $1,000 from, from his family's bowling alley this weekend. Um, suspects also broke into a bar near the bowling alley. One kicked an officer in a nearby jack-in-the-box. Two arrests were made over the weekend. Um, while Sullivan is small, it's not the first time it's found itself in the news behavior less than savory. In 2014, a dozen girls at Sullivan High School made headlines for wearing blackface during a powder puff game. I should know, this is from Dan's neck of the country. It is. Uh, honestly, These there's... These are his people. There, There's... No. No, no, no. No, no. This is just outside of St. Louis. These are not my people. But in those little towns right outside of St. Louis, there's not a lot to do, so there's a lot of meth. But... There's a lot of fucking meth in them. But pills. how do you sell this drug to someone? Okay, dude, you want something... That'll get you so messed up, you will go and try and take a shower in the 7-Eleven soda fountain naked? <laughs> I got yes. you covered. I That's got what you. I fucking want, man. You want to think you're being chased by dogs? I got you drugged. You want to think you are a dog? I got you drugged. This is, this, this is not a good drug. How <laughs> is this fun? I don't know. It, look, I've been I've been to Missouri. If I live there, I might I might understand doing this drug because <laughs> I, we went to where his mom lives, and we're going back in a couple weeks to visit his mom. And just like there's nothing, there's fucking nothing there, man. Like the nearest Starbucks was like an hour away. I don't I don't really understand civilization there like it's there's fucking nothing there and yet i would still hitch a ride to that starbucks overdoing this drug also they're all insane because like we're driving down this highway in the middle of nowhere missouri and i'm looking at the billboards and it's all either at billboards for gun gun shops various forms of jesus or businesses using weird sexual punts you say various forms of Jesus. I'm thinking shit like sweet and sour Jesus, honey mustard Jesus. <laughs> kind of. Like, Kinda. so you have to picture a place where there's fucking nothing to do and everybody's really fucking religious, incredibly heavily armed, and super sexually repressed. <laughs> and you kind of understand how this can might maybe happen. Yeah. This and thing... you kind of understand this person here. This still doesn't yeah. sound like a good drug. I don't know, man. When like, I think of recreational drugs, I think of a beer. I think of a joint, you know? Have you been to nowhere, Missouri? You know, if you get some good weed, anything's tolerable, man. I'm just saying. And I'm, I'm going to tell you, I know some of the cops in those areas. The best thing was the cops getting the call. Because it was pro probably them leaving was preceded by just banging their heads on their desks. <laughs> <laughs> We did see a lot a, of billboards for the Uranus Fudge Factory, yes, because yeah. the best fudge comes from Uranus. It does. That's their actual slogan. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and those billboards are like every mile on the highway in Missouri. The best fudge comes from Uranus. Jesus, guns, ass fudge. <laughs> and, and roadside porn shops. That's Missouri, yeah. Lots of roadside and, porn shops. Yeah. That's Missouri. There's also a great, like, roadside thing you can see outside of nowhere that's a strip club that's made out of a trailer, so. It's a whole other fucking planet, yeah, man. It really is. My my city mouse ass, <laughs> not prepared. Okay, I so guess. just like the last time we visited, Mom, we came home, and I'm like, we're watching Gone Girl again. <laughs> I, I guess the first thing we learned this week is Missouri is, is scary. Missouri <laughs> is a scary place. Yeah. She's... We've learned that you really can't steal a train. No. It's, it, this, it's not going to work. There's no exit strategy here. You could steal what's on the train. That They used to make a really good living back in the day doing that. You could that. stow away on the train. Right. But you are not taking the train home. Yeah. You're just not. No. We have learned that chicken McNuggets are not worth the jail time. No. 
as if you had to be told that. Well, I guess you had to be told that. Yeah. We've learned that replacing the baby Jesus with a sausage roll does not go down well with Christians. No. I, you know, although... Uh, Every now and then you see, like, pictures of, like, an, a, a, a churches that have the big outdoor nativity set where you'll see, like, a local <laughs> feral cat will knock the baby Jesus out of the of the bed and jump in and sleep in there. I and those always amuse me. I swear to God, my one regret for my college years was... One night we were we were all very you know just drunk and and this was this was early cam days no less and somebody in the room I forget who it was said said it said hey I got a great idea there's a nativity down the road let's go take the plastic baby Jesus and replace it with a tickle me Elmo <laughs> and we didn't do it but it was a great idea but I, I wanted to but it was a great plan. Um, we've learned that when police have, uh, interdepartmental issues, their first response is to punch the shit out of each other. That's reassuring. That's, that's productive. And finally, we've learned in America, <laughs> if you draw a penis in the sky, in the service of our nation, you get in trouble for it. No, I ask you, is this a just world? Um, yes. That is, that is, look, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, this, you call this obscene, I call this patriotism. <laughs> <laughs> it is a pretty, it is a pretty, probing statement on the current state of America. Just a giant dick in the sky. I mean, that's America 2017. <laughs> you, you, you know, if Joe Biden was still vice president, he'd have fucking high-fived that pilot. <laughs> <laughs>